Hello, I'm Kate A. Hardy and welcome to Tales of the Vestry. Today I'm going to read part two of Dog. Books. Words contained within paper. They are everywhere in this abode. I have sat on all forms of seating, absorbing words by the page. There is the computer to investigate still, but I like these things of paper. Leaving the books I explore. Her kitchen is small. The fridge hums. I join in. The sound makes my nose itch. Inside the fridge, the temperature feels familiar. I get in, partly, shut my eyes and recall a black snowstorm from when I was a hatchling. I eat a bit of everything and close the door again. I should speak with the computer, learn as much as possible before Ruby returns. Sitting down at her desk, I lift the computer's lid. The screen yawns into life. Even without touching the keys, I feel a throbbing knowledge leaking out towards me. I close my eyes and place my hands around the metal body. Languages and images, historical facts, land masses, food, animals. It's streaking into my structure. I feel as if I am filling up to drown internally. Enough! I slap the lid down again, retire to the sofa and shut down. Bath. It seems this body does not regulate temperature during shutdown. I am cold on reanimation and stand up unsteadily, thinking of warm, Im liquid immersion, something I did enjoy before the pod time. I walk stiffly to the bathroom. The elevated pool feels cold to my touch, colder even than my hands. Looking up to the small window, I see white flecks falling and accumulating. They gradually block out the grey above. I turn the metal wheels and water appears, hot from one, cold from the other. As I soak, my mind works, piecing together desired current language, geography, earth science and earth history. There are still gaps. I see them as locked boxes. One of the boxes has a label, religion. Maybe Ruby will know about this as her aunt lives with dog. The skin on my fingers has become baggy. Maybe I should get out from the water. The skin layer might eventually part from the bones. It's good in here though. Relaxing is the word that presents itself. Musical notes form in my mind. I think of an orchestra and start to sing. I like this so much that I stand and try out all the modulations, tones and possibilities. Jars and bottles rattle. The water surface undulates against my legs. As I reach the top note I can see, blue with shimmering edges, the bathroom door opens. Ruby stands with the open-mouthed expression again. She has dropped her bag. Tears run. I stop the singing and the sound continues, flailing itself against the tiles. Taking a cloth from a pile, I step out and wrap my lower half. Forgive me, did my phonic experiment alarm you? She says nothing but steps forward, even lunges, grasps me and fastens her mouth to mine. Hot colour swarms in my head. My tongue dances in her mouth as her hands slide over my wet skin. She pulls away suddenly. Oh, I don't know quite what happened. Sorry. I think about this gift. So that was a kiss? It was, but I don't usually go about seizing and kissing people. Well, not at least until I know them for a while. I pull her back to me. Would you mind if we did it again? Sex. Incredible. Odd that the tube has two functions. Most races I've encountered have separate, separate protuberances, one for excreting waste fluids and the other for seed projectiles. Anyway, who gives a space poop? It was more exciting than illegally driving a nizop around the edge of an infinity crater 
and we did it three times. Ruby's bedroom is a nest constructed of books. Even the lamp on my side sits on books instead of furniture. I prop myself up on the hinge in my arm and look at her. Have you read all of these books? She smiles contentedly. Oh, yes. Are any of them penned by yourself? There, that small tower block of spiral bound papers, my scripts waiting. Waiting? For someone to discover them. A film director or TV producer, amateur theatre, anything, anything to get me away from copywriting. The word elbow distracts me for a moment. I store it, then ask what copy is. She looks sad, all the glowingness, glowingness extinguished. I'm good at it. Give me a tin of beans and I can write copy like poetry. Hook people into buying. It pays well and I'm rather trapped. That's where I was this afternoon, talking about sanitary towels with three people devoid of irony. I feel confused. Why do people need to be told about beans or sanitary towels? They don't, but that's how it is. Too many companies making stuff and shouting about it. Here, I'll find you an example. Ruby locates a black oblong thing and points it to a small televisual device set amongst books on the shelf opposite. It wakes. There, she says, gesturing to a series of images featuring a grinning family looking at food. So they don't actually want to eat this string, I ask. Spaghetti, they might, but they're being paid to look happy to promote the company's product. The next advert features a woman putting a plate of food on her kitchen floor. I sit up and exclaim as a small, hairy white dog appears and starts to eat. That's dog! A dog? No, dog at your aunt's house. There's lots of dogs like that. Indeed. I'm silent for a moment, trying to analyse the information in one of the now semi-unlocked boxes. Ruby strokes my arm. You have a problem with dogs? I thought there was only one dog, the one that humans worship. She laughs again, but this time raucously until tears run. I feel a new emotion, a sort of seething cloud in my head. She notices. <laughs> Sorry, I think you've got some wires crossed. Wires? Figure of speech. No, I think you mean God. She shuffles out of bed, finds a book and hands it to me. Have a look at this and I'll make some tea. The book, World Religions, is fat with pages, but after perusing its contents, I still feel bewildered. Not about the dog confusion, just everything else. She returns with tea and gets back into the bed. Clearer? No. Why, if humans can send, albeit primitive vessels into their outer dimensions, why do they believe in something that cannot exist? This heaven above the sphere. She sips her tea and looks at me as if she is reappraising the amnesia excuse. Not everyone believes in God or gods, Jez. And yourself? I ask. I'm probably a pagan, if anything, a gazer at the stars, a humble wanderer. Gently taking her cup, I put it down on the table, then push the wave of dark hair from her face. I kiss her and wonder if now would be a good time to announce the truth. As I'm about to embark on my story, a mass of booming noises emanate from the still illuminated television. I sit back and observe a ruined cityscape, smoke, people running. What is this? Ruby sighs. One of the many wars in the world. I think of the interplanetary conflict I witnessed for stellar years, the fighting over rare minerals. Are they wars over resources? Some, but most like this one, are about religious beliefs. Humans will destroy each other over stories that were created hundreds of years ago in the past. Yeah, stupid, isn't it? Do you like to go for a curry? Curry. 
We sit in a dark red room that smells of something not unlike the Caprian flowers that bloom only once every four galactic years. I've eaten oily, delicious brown food that makes water run from my eyes and have drunk a long glass of Kingfisher beer which has made my limbs feel soft and disconnected. So, small birds are distilled to make this drink? Ruby snorts into her lassie. No, that's just the brand name. Beer is made from hops or wheat. People are staring at me again, and, having observed myself in the shop windows as we walked here, I can imagine why. I don't know if the Effecto Spiral who put together my earthly blueprint was deranged, tired or malicious, but from my observation so far, no one else is nearly seven foot tall with pale orange skin and turquoise eyes. The beer is fuzzying my mind. I could tell her now as she peruses the menu for sweet things. But supposing she is frightened, runs away, has me locked in a sanatorium. She looks up at me. Jez, have you ever eaten coffee? No. Will I like it? She nods and asks the hovering red-clad waiter for two of whatever they are. A worrying thought appears in my head. The monetary system of this place, London, and the remuneration for this food. Ruby, what form will the honorarium, which I can't say, be for these vittles? She stares at me as glass bowls are set before us. Sorry? I try out a new phrase that occurs to me. What's the damage likely to be? Oh, about 25 quid. You know, I don't possess any quids. I assumed so since you were naked in my aunt's shed and carrying no form of bag. I feel it is time to tell her, but as I search for words, she asks me a question. About your voice in the bathroom, how did you learn? I mean, I've never heard singing like that. I opt for the anesia again for the moment. I don't know how I know. She is silent, Colfi slipping from her spoon halfway to her mouth. She puts the spoon down. I've an idea of how you could get by. More than get by. So that's part two. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.